Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is the Incan Empire, and we're going to talk about five terms that as you read more about this time period and you read more about these peoples, consider this uh, kind of a gateway to get yourself started in understanding a little more about the complexities of this era. Let's get into it. So the first thing, if I was getting started in understanding the Incan world, would be Ailu. So if you were living, so let's say, between the 13th and the 16th centuries uh, in you know one of these areas, chances are you're going to be grouped around uh, and kind of centered around uh, a clannish and sort of family network, which would have been this idea of, of the Ailu, which would have dictated kind of where you're living, the households you're connected to, up to about 10, uh, the amount of land that you have access to, which also then relates to the government, uh, and kind of the, the daily order of how you're sort of ritualizing uh, your, your life. This brings us to the second point, so uh, road networks, right? So one of the interesting things about the Incan world is these really sort of complex series of road networks uh, that are constructed because, uh, you know, the empire itself is this sort of loose confederation uh, of these communities, which exist not only in modern Peru, but in a number of other areas as well. Uh, and the topography is, you know, quite quite different from, let's say, uh, the coastal lowlands up into the highlands. Uh, and so in order to be able to traverse all of that, right, you have to have some fairly effective road networks. Uh, and in order to construct those, you obviously have to have an empire that's going to devote time to labor uh, to be able to construct them. And so, of course, uh, for many individuals, uh, a tax of labor uh, or mita is going to be due, uh, which is going to really sort of be a defining part of life for many uh, individuals. That brings us to our third term, uh, Cusco. Uh, so this is going to be the capital city of the empire uh, for quite a while. So again, we're talking about the sort of 13th uh, through about the 16th century here. Uh, it's a fairly complex and really sort of fascinating city. Uh, you're looking at at least four sections of which, you know, kind of grouped around different sections of the empire uh, and leading figures of state, of course, been being expected uh, to live in, in those areas. Uh, the city of Cusco also has a role to play, certainly in facilitating trade throughout the, uh, the empire, uh, and also, of course, uh, plays a, a role uh, with the arrival of the Spanish uh, and the process of resistance uh, for, for people across the Andes uh, against uh, Spanish authority. Uh, there's a fairly massive siege uh, that occurs in Cusco uh, in 1536 uh, and in 1537. Uh, the fourth term for us is going to be the, the Sapa Inca. Uh, this is, of course, going to be the, the emperor uh, of, of, of the Incan Empire. Uh, the emperor was uh, descended from the Inti, or sun god. Uh, and I think one of the interesting parts about the sort of imperial title and sort of the imperial state here, uh, you know, is it certainly tells us a lot about uh, the complex polytheism and also, of course, the role that class played uh, within the Incan world as well. All right. That brings us to our, our fifth point, uh, which is Cajamarca. So you have, of course, the arrival of, of the Spanish uh, in the Americas uh, in 1492. Uh, it isn't until the 15 teens and 20s uh, you start to see the arrival of other Spanish uh, conquistadors and others and armies uh, really across other parts of Latin America. Uh, but the process of conquest, of course, is operating in earnest here. Uh, by the time you get to early 1532, you're going to have Spanish forces numbering just over 100 individuals uh, who are going to be engaging uh, some of these armies. Uh, Cajamarca was the site of a, a battle that takes place there in 1532, a fairly big battle, uh, which the Spanish are going to be successful at. But uh, resistance across the Incan world uh, would continue well past this particular engagement. Uh, and so you will see pockets of resistance and, and, and really pushing back against the presence of, of Spanish authority here for, you know, after quite a long time after Pizarro, uh, which is, you know, kind of a, a fascinating part of the legacy, uh, certainly, uh, and, and the importance of the identity of the Incan world here. Uh, and it's one that will also be influential uh, when it comes to thinking about opposition and resistance to Spanish authority uh, at the end of the 18th century and into the early 19th century uh, as well with figures like uh, Tupac Amaru uh, among others. 
All right. Thank you so very much.